All right, guys, this is going to be another really quick just how to tip video, whatever. So let's just get right into it. All right, you definitely missed a little bit. The GoPro died on me and I just kind of soldiered on and finished, you know, putting together what I could. So took a little break for some lunch and we're going to get right back into it. I'm at the turnbuckles now. So this is a good, <clears throat> a good part to actually show you guys. All right. So I'm pretty sure you understand how these work. You got regular threads on one side and reverse threads on one side. <clears throat> So when you tighten these guys, so when you turn it, they move independent of each other, kind of like this, which will let, allow you to adjust the car. All right. So what you want to do is I, when I'm building them, so say the car is this way, right? So this is the front of the car. That's so, so this way. So this back car, this is the front of the car. So you want to build your turnbuckles to where when you turn this side, right, it will tighten the turnbuckle which will pull it in for or lean your tire in and on this side you want to do the same same thing so when you turn it to the right it pulls this tire in it just makes it easier so if you go to the right on any or any one of your corners if you turn it to the right it'll actually tighten it when you turn it to the left it'll loosen it so um yeah <laughs> I'm trying to explain it the best I can. But if you look at the Kyosho turnbuckles, there's this fat part and the smaller part. Well, when the smaller part is facing out towards, so if the smaller part's the right side, then that's the right, the, the fat part will be the right threads, the right-handed threads, I guess. That's what I'd be considered. So say if I hold this, the skinny part's facing this way. So think of that as being like the top of the nut. Just forget that there's threads on both side. So if you hold it, and I spin that to the right of my hand, oh, hold on, let me get a better grip. You can see that it's closing up. So, the fat side of that is your correct threads. The small side is your reverse threads. Or standard threads, reverse threads, something like that. So what you wanna do is have these facing in the same direction. So they'll all be facing to the right side of the car. That's what you're wanting to do. Now, I'm not going to use these. I'm going to use titanium turnbuckles. And they kind of have the same thing going on. Or at least I thought there was like a little mark on them. Can't see it right now, so maybe they don't. But I'll just hold it and turn it. So that's actually going the opposite direction. So it goes this way. Turn it. So there we go. So this is the reverse threads, standard threads. So I just go ahead and lay them out. And the correct, it's working, reverse, standard. Go ahead and set all these bad boys out. Reverse standard. All right. Now I just like turn it up a bunch of times just to reassure myself that I'm doing it correctly. So now I know to the left are uh, are the standard threads, and to the right are the reverse threads. So. And now that when it, like I said, the Kyosha makes it easy, you know which way is which on these. And I have this little tool and it fits in there perfect like that. So I now know my standard thread is facing out. So we'll set that to the side for a second. So we'll come over here and go ahead and get the rest of the parts we need ready. And what I like to do is go ahead and lay them out. This little beveled, the little kick up one goes to the out. So it goes to your the outside of the car to your axle or to the hub side. Jeez. So lay that guy over there. Get another one. Goes to the hub side, right? So we'll move them down here. 
do. That should be enough hole. To the hub side. And then you gotta figure out, get the ones within, right and the little, <clears throat> the straight one goes to the, the shock tower side. So go ahead and put one right there. Go ahead and put one right there. So now we got them laid out. And all your other parts, these guys, you'll use these later. Don't lose them. Mm, I'm guessing that's right, yeah. Two and two. So yeah. So sit these guys off to the side. Don't want to lose those. I'm about to make a big mistake. Look at there. Remember, one to one, so. Bam. There we go. So that's what I'm saying. Make sure, pay attention. <laughs> But I made a mistake and used the wrong end. So pay attention to what you're doing. But yeah, you can see right there. See? Bam. Just like that. So the reason I lay them out like this, go ahead and turn, turn them the way you want. Like there's, you can see like a casting mark on there. I always like try to put those towards the back. So I like it'd be kind of behind the sway bars or the shock tower so you don't see it. It's just one of those little things that make it look better. And on one of these, you're not going to be able to do it because that kick up. So one of them will be facing forward. So ain't much you can do. Oh, I think this is the, the other grease. And again, I use this grease a lot. I use this whole entire thing when I build a kit. It's here. It works. Like I said, I don't know what the stuff is, but it's pretty good. So just get a little dab on your threads. Run it up like that. But we'll start building the uh, the right side first. So this is the hub side. We're going to go ahead and put one of the right, the standard threads in one of the uh, hub side turnbuckles. So go ahead and line it up. Make sure it's going in straight. These can be kind of a pain to start. So just kind of a little bit of pressure and forcer in there. Get her going straight. You can go ahead and round it in. I like to run it all the way in. Now I'm going to take it out. And you can also grab like a screwdriver or something. Make sure you're turning it the right way. Oh shoot. Right. And he's taking that out. And place it right back over here. So now that we're keeping these in the same direction, I'm going to get a little bit of grease. Grease up that those threads again. And grab your opposite side. So grab the left-hand side shock tower end. And go ahead and force it in there. Get it started. Check it to make sure it's going in straight. And run it on in. Ah, jerk. I hate when they try to cross thread and go in crooked. So I like to get like the first couple turns in by hand before I put any kind of tool or anything on it. Yeah, try your best to keep these things straight. They can be a pain in the butt. I found out this guy fits like perfect, so put that on there. Make sure it goes all the way in. And take it on out. And get to the end, just stop. Pull it out. Okay. 
and set this guy right back in the place where it's supposed to be. Now, pull this out, flip it, put a little bit of grease on your threads. Now we're on the reverse thread side now. Put a little grease on there. And just remember which ones you've done. Now pick up the shock tower side for the right hand, for the right side of the car. And remember, these reverse, so you got to turn to the left. Make sure she's staying straight. Now it can get a little tricky when you switch to the sides. So you still got to turn to the left, I believe. Yep, still going to the left. Yep. So go to the left. You might be wondering, like, why are you taking the headache of like threading all these in and stuff like that? I'll explain in just a second. Get it all the way down on there. Make sure you're going. You're actually loosening it because you can't tighten it and bust the end of these things. <laughs> so be careful. It gets a little confusing because you keep you're going back and forth. So go to the. Oh, see, it's trying to take it to the left. So now we'll set this guy back right here. <clears throat> we'll get a little more grease. Wipe off the extra. And grab the hub side, or on the left side, the hub. Yeah, that's right, geez. Remember, we're still going to the left because we're on the reverse thread. Make sure she's staying straight. Looking pretty good. Still going to the left. Yep. Da, 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 da. Going to the left still. Not quite there. Close enough. Now go to the right. When you get towards the end, go ahead and stop. That way you're not uh, walking it, making that, you know, get kind of wiggle it, or, you know, wobble out that hole. Now you can take this guy, which is basically just was a, a tap. <laughs> Move it out of the way. So now you can build your turnbuckles for real. Now you still remember which way these go, right? I hope so. So we have them lined up the correct way. So all the ones over here are still the standard thread one's over here reverse thread so all i have to do is take this guy put it over here take this guy and put it right there we'll go ahead and put a little bit more grease this just kind of helps them not stick makes your life easier when you're adjusting your car and i'm not like a big like you know it has to be lightweight stuff or anything like that um I just like the look of the titanium screws and titanium turnbuckles. So I'm not doing this for like the lightweight or anything. Now if you've done that correctly, this should start and just kind of thread in almost perfect. <clears throat> Grab my little tool. Now I don't know the exact size of the threads, but I'm pretty sure that these Lungford uh, turnbuckles are just a tiny bit bigger because it doesn't feel like they're the same size. So I put my hand over this guy. And as you see, we turn it to the right and it's tightening. So we've done it right. So we'll go ahead, put this guy in there, hold it right there. Come up and go to the right. And again, I like to run these all the way in. Because you'll hear it sometimes they'll like push out air. So once I get it all the way around in, or pretty close, <laughs> wipe this off real quick. So I get it like really close to where it's like you can't see any more of the smooth edge. And I find a certain spot that I want this to be up. So hold right here. Now we'll just go one, two, three, four, we'll go five. 
So the reason I'm doing this is just so I can keep track of um, the, the amount of threads I'm turning out. So I can get them even from the right side to the left side. So you want to turn it out enough to where you can actually get the other end all the way down. So without moving it out of your tool, just turn it to the side. Grab a little bit more grease. Drop a little grease in there. Grab your other end. Now this one, like I, if you turn it the opposite direction, you'll feel it when it gets past the threads when it actually start. So just turn it to the right in this case because this is the reversed hand thread. And you'll feel it kind of drop into where it's going to start going on. So there we go. Go ahead and speed this up. Like I said, still remember, reverse threads, gotta go to the left. Tighten this bad boy down. Sometimes you'll get that nice, satisfying air sound where it's like pushing air out. Because it's trapping air in there. So, once you get the turnbuckle lined up the way you want, wipe it off again. So in my case, I always line these casting marks facing out. So I'm gonna put my tool back on there. And me talking, I forgot how many times I turned that, but I'm pretty sure it was five times. This is reverse, so I gotta go to the right. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Make sure it's lined up. And that right there. And that right there is how you build a turnbuckle that is 100% correct. As you see, both the, the smooth sides are gonna be facing out. So this is gonna go on the uh, right hand side, just like that. Lay this one over here. And now all I have to do is just repeat the process with this guy and then it'll be done. So keep everything in order. Put a little bit of grease on there. <clears throat> Get that guy going. Oof. I think this might be the one that I kind of cross-threaded a little bit. It was a little crooked. Oh yeah. Definitely a little crooked. Just work with it, try to get it going in as clean as possible. There we go. All right. Take off. Go all the way in. Clean that so I can see. turn on that one I think what the heck's going on right there there we go so, so turn this guy down like the rough face and down so now that I have it where it's pretty much all the way in where it's sitting flush against that I'll go ahead and put my hand on it and back this thing out five turns. One, two, three, four, five. Try to keep it lined up. So, without losing my position, because if you, if you flip the tool, if you move the tool, it's gonna be out of line and your count will be off. So I just try to leave it in the tool if you can, or just remember this, the flush side facing up is the one you're, you wanna match it up to. So like I said, if you turn this to the right, you, you'll kinda of see it, feel it pop down on the threads and then you can start putting it on. So. 
Just like I said, just keep an eye on that it's going on there straight. Why don't you get a couple turns in there and grab your tool. And just remember that this is the reverse side. We're going to the left. Bam, bam, bam. And we want to go... Hmm, that might be a bit much. So... I think that's going to be it. It's a little off. So you want to get as close to perfect as possible, but I think another turn on this would be too much. Well, this will be the uh, reverse one anyway, I think. So let's do that. Yeah, this is going to be the reverse one. That's why it's that way. Okay. Yeah, so Mira, Mira I was telling you, like, one of these, the rough part will have to be facing out towards you. This is going to, because I wasn't thinking about it, but yeah. So I was like a turn off, but now it's like sitting against it flush. So now I can do my count and turn it back. So we got to go to the right. Yep. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Yep, make sure they're lined up. Wipe it off real quick. And that right there, guys, is how you build perfect turnbuckles. These things are 100% equal turns out. Like, you don't want, you know, more threads on this side and less threads on that side. This is about as good as it gets, or as, about, or as good as I know how to get it. So <laughs> Now, keep them in the position that they're supposed to be in. We'll worry about our adjustment in just a second. I want to go ahead and get them on the car before we do that. So, move our rear end over here. We'll go ahead and grab the other parts we need. All right, and we'll go ahead and grab our tool. Now, the little, the ball that doesn't have the little flare on it or the threads in it, these go into the shock tower. So these are your shock tower sides. So go ahead and move these right here. Shock tower side, shock tower side. Hub, hub side. So now that you got them laid out, go ahead and put that guy on there. I always like to push in on the rough side. I don't think it really matters. <clears throat> Grab that. Be careful that you don't push it, force it all the way through. Boom. And then go ahead and grab this side. That was a good one. <clears throat> All right, so keep them in the same place. You know which one's which, right and left, whatever. So then come over here and find the screws that you need. I'll be changing these in a second. Like so I'm going titanium. I just, for the sake of the video, we'll go ahead and throw these on here. Look at your location. Slide it in there. Just like that. Go ahead and grab your other one. Slide it in there. Boom. So, keep them in the right place. But we'll go ahead and turn this guy around. Grab our driver. Get everything lined up. Just being a pain in the butt right now. Of course, it's going to be a pain when I'm trying to explain it to you guys. All right, so now we got it started. Run it down. 
a little snug, not going too crazy with it at the moment. Put it around this side down. Alright, so grab our our bolts. That's it. Look at where she's going. Line your axle up with your outdrive. Slide it in there and we're going all the way to the bottom front. Come on. Drop that thing down there. I always like to put the bolts to where if the nut comes loose, it'd be a little harder for them to fall out because you're going forward. So they might, I think it's going to help keep it in there. Probably not going to matter, but you know. Once again, line your outdrive up. Go into the bottom front. Like I said, these can be kind of a pain, especially when the car is new. Come on, jerk, jeez. All right, so I'm not gonna put, like I'm not gonna put the nuts on this and everything right now, because like I said, I'll be changing these out in just a second. So for the sake of the video, I'm gonna show you why we did what we did. So if you build your front ones the exact same way, we just built these. When you are got your car on the table, you're doing your setup, this is why you'll do it. So hold the car, it's coming to this side. So say we wanna go, we wanna tighten it, right? So if I turn it to the right, see it's tightening it. So we're getting tighter. So now if I go to this side of the car, it just keeps it in your mind, righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. It's just a habit. So you don't have to think about which way you're turning it. So, now if we go to the right still, see it's tightening it. So, just threw something. That's why you do that, so. See, just makes your life a whole lot easier and makes it kinda, you don't have to really think about it. So now I'm turning to the left and it's loosening it back up. Grab over here, turn to the left, oh jeez, and it's loosening it up. <clears throat> just like that. That's what I'm talking about. So if you do your front the same way, like I said, it's just, you don't have to really think about it. It makes it really easy to set up your car and make adjustments. So now you want to grab your calipers. Make sure they're zeroed out. Go ahead and set it to what Kyosho recommends. Oh man, depending on how the car is set up, this can be a, a kind of a pain to do it when it's on the car, as you can kind of see, we're hitting. So, just gotta find an angle where you can actually get them in there. So. So I got that locked in, so I'm just going to assume that it's still correct. Like I said, I'll, always, I'll check this before. So I need to go to the right to tighten it, to close this up. A little bit more. I'm going to call that good. So I'm going to step over here and check this guy. Need to close it up a little bit. Again, to the right. Super easy. Same direction. A little bit more. Dang it. A little bit more. A little bit less. <laughs> OCD's kicking in again. It don't have to be that perfect, I'm sure. There we go. All right. So now, the rear part of your car is, pretty, for the most part, ready to go. 
Now, I always forget to do this. But, like, I always put those little ends. I'm going to wait and do it anyway. But, anyway, I put little ends on those to hold them. I'm going to show you guys that later. But, yeah, that is pretty much how you build a turnbuckle. Now, this will be the part where I tell you not to skip around. But, me, I'm going to go ahead and turn through the instructions to the front turnbuckles and everything and go ahead and get those built. So, I'm not going to bore you guys with that. Even your steering linkage, you do those the exact same way. If you lay those things out, to basically go ahead and just build them without the turnbuckle in the center and then like I said just put put your tool in there go ahead and cut your threads if you're going to use those then you can just put them together that way if you're going to upgrade to titanium turnbuckles like I said you can go ahead and throw those in there so I'm going to go ahead and get those knocked out and then if I come across something else I think you guys need to see I will show it to you so let me go ahead and get to this and get this thing knocked out a little bit more but yeah, this is just how I build my turnbuckles. It works out pretty good for me. Like I said, like I told you guys, I, you know, if you're new to the hobby, whatever, jumping around may cause issues. But when it comes to building stuff like this, if you're building four shocks, you might as well build all four of them. If you're building three differentials, you might as well build all three of them at the same time. Same way with turnbuckles. If, if you have to go through the headache of building the front ones or the rear ones, you might as well build them all at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, this is just like so just a quick video of you know how I build my turnbuckles. Seems to work out pretty good. It kind of helps you from getting confused, like I said, if you just lay everything out and build them all at the same time. So but I hope this helps anybody that's uh, struggling with building turnbuckles. So like I said, if you guys like these videos, I'll keep making little videos like this. But for this one, that's the end. Just want to say thanks for watching and I appreciate all the support. Thanks guys. I wouldn't call it clean. I think it goes side slap the pipe a little bit. I'll take that over crack that. It's a big jump.